Bulgaria is one of the newest members of the European Union. A country of 8 million people, it lies in the southeastern corner of Europe, just above Greece. It is a country of extremes, and whilst in the cities there is plenty of money, in the countryside things have changed little since the Soviet era. I have come here because Bulgaria has the highest number of physically and mentally disabled children growing up in institutes anywhere in Europe. Children who have been abandoned. With my interpreter, Maria, I want to meet and film the children in one of these institutes. Mogilino is a remote village in the hills of northern Bulgaria, an hour from the nearest town. The main employer in the area is the former schoolhouse on the hill, now a social care home. 75 mentally and physically disabled children live here. It is the autumn, and for the next nine months, we will be filming life behind these walls. Vasky is blind and was diagnosed with cerebral palsy when she was three, a condition many are labelled with here. Despite her tiny frame, Vasky is 18. Stoyan is also blind. He was born prematurely weighing just one kilo. Like Vasky, he came here when he was three. He's now 11. Vasky and Stoyan's lives have unfolded entirely within this room since the day they arrived. Oh. Does she have any parents? Uh, Abandoned. Because of her blindness? Yes. Over half the children in this room were abandoned by their parents. Their only disability is their blindness. And the doctors say, that's it? Yeah. Do you believe that there's nothing that can be done for her? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She was a little girl, she was a little girl. She was a little girl, she was a little girl. She was a little girl, she was a little girl. Do you believe that she doesn't walk anymore because she can't, because her legs are, won't take her weight? Yes, yes, yes. She can, she can. 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 Do your legs hurt you? Yes. The children rock endlessly through each day. The only thing to look forward to during the unchanging hours is meal times. Milan has been at Mogilino for 14 years, since he was five. He doesn't speak. What's up?
He has never had the chance to learn as there is no education here. But Milan fills his time by working for the staff. And at least by helping out with the laundry, he gets outside, while the others remain confined within the building. Oh. Milan was abandoned as a baby. His parents are both dead now, and so Milan's legal guardian is the director of the institute. Dee Dee has recently arrived and is trying to adjust to her new environment. Like Milan, she tries to break the monotony by helping out with menial tasks. Didi is mildly autistic, but otherwise normal. Didi writes to her mother every day. Did she reply to your letter, Didi? Didi's mother couldn't cope with her living at home, so she sent her to Mogilino. Didi is smart, and her mother knew her daughter would find her way back unless she sent her far away. The children here are classified as non-educable, children who are not capable of learning so no education of any kind is given. After the long hours of waiting, meals last only a few minutes and are a competition in which the strongest maintain their strength by making sure they get the most food. There's a clear pecking order amongst the children. There are leaders, followers, helpers, and bullies. Mm. 